Hello everyone. On request and suggestions of many, I have started a new playlist of videos on biomedical research. I shall begin with videos on the basic course in biomedical research called as BCBR or BCBMR, qualifying which has been a made a mandatory criterion for PG exit exam and for promotion if you are in academic line. So starting off with the first chapter that is introduction to health research. I hope these videos will be of a great help since the BCBR presentations are at places lacking in explanations and examples. Now health research has a very wide range that is from A to Z. It can vary from being purely theoretical to having application. It can be based on prevention or treatment. It can be done in lab or on the patient. It can explore something unknown or can confirm what is already known to us. It can be directly implemented or the results can be translated into clinical applications. So why do we do research in medical science? To get new or additional information, to verify and confirm the already available information, to explain the cause-effect relationship, test new drugs, vaccines, tools or interventions, the best example of which is COVID-19 pandemic, and evaluate the ongoing health programs and assess the feasibility of the new programs. So all these things can be done at both the individual and at the community level. The ultimate aim of health research is improvement of population's health by predicting the disease occurrence, making interventions for disease prevention, and devising methods to cure the disease, disease that is to reduce morbidity and mortality. Now the breadth and depth of inquiry in health research as we already saw can pertain to either human host or the surrounding environment of the host or to healthcare infrastructure and delivery which is done mostly by health programs. Now there are three fundamental principles for doing a research. The first and the foremost thing is before jumping on to starting research you need to plan. There should be adequate justification to conduct the study. The research question should be very clear and focused as to what you exactly want to do. The case definitions you use should be absolutely standard and uniform. The sample should be representative so that the results of our study can be applied to a larger population that is the population of the entire state or the country. The sample size should have enough power. This means it should be able to detect what it is actually intended to detect. Then second is teamwork. Doing a research is not a single person's job and we should build up our team for performing the research. And the last is review. Whatever one is doing should be reviewed at various steps by more competent and higher authority. Now you can be asked question on these three fundamental principles of health research. The review is basically of three types. Scientific review looks whether your project is going to add something new or it is a repetition of the work already done in the past. Is it rational, that is feasible and is it justified doing the study in the manner you want to and on the patients you want to. This kind of review that is scientific review is done by your guides, mentors, seniors in the field. Next is the ethical review which is done usually by the institutional ethics committee or the institutional review board to see if there has been a violation in protection of rights and privacy of the patients. Last is the regulatory review which looks after foreign funding, sample shipment, intellectual property, exchange of visitors and other policies by federal agencies. Now you can also be asked question on what thing comes under what kind of review. So the process of health research includes collecting data systematically, drawing meaningful conclusions, then taking appropriate decisions, doing evidence-based actions and finally evaluating the impact of these actions. Now for example in the earlier days if we take the example of poliomyelitis, we needed to have data on as to what percentage of people getting infected are actually vaccinated. Suppose the conclusion was very low. 
so the appropriate decision was to increase the immunization coverage now what actions we took were door to door immunization policies pulse polio campaigns advertising etc and we wanted to know the impact of these actions by afp surveillance so there are some study designs which have been mentioned in this chapter by of bcbr the first is qualitative versus quantitative these terms are actually not used for study design per se but for the type of variable which you want to test qualitative is something which is not numerical it cannot be measured for example color can be red blue yellow or green quantitative on the other hand can be measured for example age can be 10 months 10 years or even 50 years or whatsoever then observational study is a study which simply records or observes and experimental study on the other hand is analyzing or finding a relationship between two things for example an observational study would be to describe the clinical features of children with covid-19 and an experimental study would be to study the role of steroids in children with covid-19 to study the role of steroids actually we need to conduct an experiment in which we might have to give steroids to some children and might not have to give steroids to some other children like case control or a better would be a randomized control trial this we do to see whether steroids are beneficial or harmful so we are experimenting in this case then there are retrospective and prospective studies retrospective studies move from the outcome to the variable for example if you do a study on random blood sugar levels in children with covid-19 on admission by review of case records you already know that the outcome that is the patient has been discharged con lama has expired or is still on bed suppose one or two years later you want to do the study by the chart review so this is a retrospective study but if you do a similar study by following up the patient since the time he was admitted up to the final outcome of the patient this is referred to as prospect that is to see in future then there are two kinds of errors in research because no research can be completely devoid of errors the first is random error random error is something which occurs by chance we do not actually put in the error but it occurs by chance it can be decreased by increasing the sample size examples are sampling error and measurement error let me give you an example suppose we want to know how many children with covid-19 have normal d dimer levels if we perform the study on 10 patients and find it to be true in two of them we think the result is 20% but suppose we increase the sample size to 1000 children and find only 80 children have normal d dimer levels then by increasing the sample size we are making the results more reliable and more generalizable and applicable to the external population the entire population so this is a kind of random error which can be decreased by increasing the sample size which is which should be more representative of the population in whom you want to apply the results of the study the other kind of error is a systematic error which is the error due to bias it can be decreased by improving the study design of the study for example selection bias and information bias the example of information bias is recall bias now if we want to study the prevalence of malnutrition in a specific area and we take into account malnourished children coming to the hospital in that area for some reason versus we do a study by a door to door survey of every house and then look for children who are malnourished what do you think which would be more reliable obviously the second one so we need to overcome these errors so that the re results are more generalizable to the external population now there are certain challenges in design and implementation of studies first is the confounders the confounders affect both the variable as well as the outcome and these confounding factors are decreased by improving the study design and through stratified analysis now the word confounding means confusing for example if we wish to know the effect of alcohol consumption in heart disease in this case smoking will be a confounding or a confusing factor 
Why? Because most of the alcoholics smoke also and smoking itself alone increases the risk of coronary artery disease. So in these subset of patients who are alcoholics and smokers, we shall not be able to make a definite conclusion to as to whether it is the alcohol consumption which is causing the heart disease or smoking itself which is doing so. The other kind of challenge will be an effect modifier. The effect modifier affects the outcome, usually negatively, and it is decreased by a good literature review, by a good self-study or homework. Now, for example, there is no point doing a research on some drug X which works only in females with diabetes and not male, because once again, the results are not going to be generalizable at all. I hope I have been able to do some justice to the first chapter. Thank you so much and do share the knowledge.